So I'm not sure how much of this you'll be able to see while I'm cleaning the stems out of my autumn olives for this amazing applesauce from Russell's and from the CSA and from the tree across the street and um, these just abundant, abundant, amazing apples that we have everywhere and Caton eats applesauce by the quart jar sorry about that by the quart jar out of the canning jar all winter long um, but I want to not stop what I'm doing and make it a point to make a video talking about fear. Um, I just saw, because I'm on Facebook way too much and it's driving me crazy, um, <clears throat> an article from the Huffington Post at 4.40 p.m., a developing story that the first domestic case of Ebola has been reported. Um, I want to mention so I don't forget, because it's what's in my train of thought right now, that I do have an amazing wild woman sister, who I will tag here, um, that has found some research or some teaching somewhere saying that elderberry can actually be useful against hemorrhagic fevers, uh, of which Ebola is one. Um, it's also very good against viruses, of which Enterovirus 68 is one. Um, <laughs> Enteroviruses, which also include polio. Um, and the point here is elderberry is very important to be having right now. But the bigger point, which is why I started this video, is about fear. And I want to speak to a lot of the parents that I know that have made the conscious decision not to vaccinate. And I am hearing a lot of stories about fear coming back up for a lot of families that have made this conscious decision not to vaccinate. I apologize for the sink in front of me, but this is what we've got. Um, we made these decisions for a reason, and some of us made these decisions. I made this decision because of my education which is undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate education, including microbiology and immunology and biochemistry and pathology and pathophysiology, which is what happens when organs stop working properly, um, and uh, postdoc training with PhD neuroimmunologist and board-certified medical pediatricians um, I've got some very specific opinions about what happens to the different branches of the immune system, Th1 and Th2 branches of the immune system, as a result of the current vaccine schedule and the way that it's being delivered. Um, and I want to speak to the fear, because I know a lot of parents right now are really second-guessing those decisions, but... I'm just going to ask you to remember why you made the decisions and what your true vitalistic belief is in the immune system, particularly when you're a vitalist like me and you believe that a lot of the plants and the medicines that are in our gardens already or what are there to be the seasonal tonics to help strengthen our bodies and stop us from getting sick or allow our bodies to have the illness and uh, have a not unbearable level of symptomatology, the poop and the boogers and the sneezing and all those other things that are your body's way of practicing and remembering how to cleanse these bacteria and viruses in our system that don't belong there. So um, <clears throat> I just want to remind you parents that are you know making some of these decisions and all parents really in general to just remind everybody that the body was made to do what it knows how to do and that's how to be healthy if we just don't put any additional interference into it and it's hard because we're putting a lot of interference into it already just in the environment 
Um, and you can just make yourself sick as a parent over all of these different things. But there are some things that are controllable and we can use the plants, we can use the natural healing abilities to enhance the immune system, particularly the Th1 part of the immune system that is the cellular part that recognizes things that invade when they don't belong there. Um, Th1 system, by the way, being one of the things that has been partially drilled out of um, newborns and very young children right from birth with the way that the vaccine schedule is being introduced. My understanding, based on my gifted teachers, is that the Th2 immune system is becoming completely dominant and a lot of these children don't have a very strong cellular immunity anymore and that's why some of them get sick and they're sick all the time because any little thing that they come across is getting across their mucosal membrane or into their digestive system and it's making them very sick because their body doesn't have the ability to um, stay ahead of that curve. So I just want to remind again all parents to be strong in your choices and remember why you made them when the fear comes up you need to make the decision that's right for yourself with each situation that comes up but please always try and go back to that place in you as a parent with your intuition and your ability to um, evaluate knowledge and wisdom that's coming at you from whatever direction it's coming at you and deciding whether it's valid for you or not and helping you make a conscious decision that feels right to you and that there are things we can do to balance and support our immune system and that includes learning about a lot of the wild edibles that I'm teaching about um, on a really regular basis so please uh, stay tuned if you're interested in learning more about how to utilize these free local plants that are growing everywhere around you um, please stay in touch with me and stay strong and have a great night. Love you.